I want you to grab your Bibles if you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 3. Isaiah 44 and verse number 3. Oh, I even forgot. Ah, my brother Prophet EJ was here. You know, he's, this is like his church. Uh, I want to thank my brother Prophet EJ. Amen, amen. That also came and blessed tremendously. Amen. Th that's, that's, that's more than blood to me. That's, that's more than I don't even know what to call him. I love him dearly. There's, there's, uh, I don't think there is a man on earth I love like him. I truly love him. And I really appreciate him. He was preaching, got on a flight and came directly here. So I'm grateful for him. Sometimes you forget to thank the people in the house. That's my brother. So <laughs> I repent, sir, if you're watching. Um, Isaiah, did we say Isaiah 44.3? Yes, Isaiah 44.3. Can we read it together? Four. Uh, one, two, three. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And verse 44. And they shall oh, verse spring. Four. And they <laughs> shall spring. I'm sorry, up. my bad. Let's start. I'm rusty. I haven't been in church. <laughs> Let's start from verse three again. <laughs> For I will pour water upon that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass. As, as willows, willows by, by the, the water, water courses. One shall. I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Hallelujah. Let's read it again from 1 to 5. Now we know where we are stopping. I told you I'm rusty. Let's start again. 1, 2, 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, mm -hmm and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they shall spring up as among the grass, grass as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am, I am the Lord's, and, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and, and another, another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Father. Father. I look to you. I look to you. I look to you. I look to you. Cause something new to happen in me. Cause something new to happen in me. Cause a new beginning to proceed from me. Cause a new beginning to proceed from me. Cause true life to spring from me. Cause true life to spring from me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray for two seconds. Cause life to spring from me, Lord. Call new, life new, life to new life to spring, me. Father. Do a new thing in me. A new thing within us, Father. Father, cause a new thing to spring upon us. Le paraba de tamanda la ba un brandi se tura pa la ruko rile la ba un brando in Jesus mighty and powerful name Jesus name. somebody shout amen. amen amen you may sit in heavenly places now go back to verse 3 for me now i want to explain something to you that we have two kinds of people we have believers that indeed are in Christ, they walk with God, they worship God, they pray, they do everything correctly that you can think of, but they have no life-giving springs. Uh, I think I started too hot. Let me, let, me, let me start over. We have two kinds of believers. One that is able to produce life that can benefit others. 
And one that loves God, but inside of them, they have no capacity to produce springs of living waters. Now, this is a reality because if you look at the Lord's great commission, this was a command. It was not an option. It was not a request. It was not a thought, but it was what God's mind was. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. He never said pray for them. It means that there is a level and a dimension you get to that you begin to produce these things without effort. Let me look for somebody I can talk to. You see... Your place of prayer, your place of prayer differs from your place of miracle. Nobody came to Jesus for him to pray for a miracle. People came to Jesus to receive a miracle. Amen. Amen. No one went to the apostles to receive prayer. They knew if Peter's shadow touches me. Come on. Come on, prophet. Hallelujah. They understood that these people reached a place. If I can get in touch with him, something happens to me. Amen. I believe it was Paul. He was teaching. And, and, and I'll tell you this. It means that to, Paul, even though he was a man of revelation, he may have not been a very dynamic preacher. He's preaching somebody falls asleep sitting at a window. I don't care how tired I am. I'm not sitting at a window on the second floor. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> the apostle of grace is preaching, preaching. They just, whoop, whoop, poof. <laughs> somebody dead. Do you know what he did? He came out of service, went down, raised him, said, get back, sit down, listen to the message. Amen. Notice, he didn't even think about going down and saying, Now, Father, how could this person die when I'm preaching? It was like an off and on button. He just went down. The Bible literally says he went downstairs. Rise up. Go back to church. There was a level that this man carried. It is a dimension that exists. It is a reality. That you can be a man and a woman of God that can walk. Producing life to the extent that anyone, even if they are non-believer. You see, the Bible says that God causes the rain to fall on both the good and the wicked. God doesn't heal you because you're good. God doesn't bless you because you're faithful. God does it because he is good. Because he is Faithful. Amen. Amen. So if you carry springs of living waters, it doesn't matter who you come in contact with. They will come to Christ because they'll be like, wait, how could this God use this person to bless me when I'm still like this, when I'm still like that? Let me repent and change my ways. So understand there are people who carry life. And there are people who carry zero life, even though the life of God indwells them. Even though the life of God indwells them. Notice the same manner in which the Lord Jesus performed miracles and healed the sick, delivered the, the, the people. It is the same manner that his apostles also did it. The same manner. It is the same way. He didn't tell them now you have to do this differently. No. Do the same way that you see me doing. Go and heal them. Cleanse them. People are hungry uh, because there is no food. They come to Jesus and Jesus says, you give them what to eat. Notice whenever God looks at you, he is seeing the capacity for there never to be lack. Amen. Amen. Let me say something to somebody who is ready to receive it. Yeah, 
Whenever God looks at you, yes. he doesn't see why you are in need. He cannot comprehend it. To him, it does not add up. How are you in need? Yeah. Let me take you somewhere. Genesis chapter 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 4, sorry. Genesis 2, let's start from verse 4. Now, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Verse 5. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. So where were they? Mm. Because God said it is good. Yeah. But now the, inside the generation, meaning the, when God created everything, it took time before man was in play. So when he's saying this is good, that is good, this is good, nothing is still there. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. So what was God saying is good? And nothing is growing. Listen to what the Bible says. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Let's stop right there. Do you realize the first record of rain on the earth is in the time of Noah? Teach. I think you are asleep. That should really bother you. There was never a need for rain. It had not rained until Noah's time. That is why when Noah said, grain is coming. <laughs> They're looking at him like, you, you are crazy, bro. <laughs> Enough rain to flood. <laughs> they are building a boat. No one had ever built a boat. Because remember before that, the earth, had not, uh, uh, the, the, it was still one continent. So no one needed to sail. So this invention called boat, <laughs> that you're going to float and... <laughs> Noah, uh, come on, bro. It had never rained. All God caused is the mist to go on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground. Notice, things began to grow when Adam was put in the garden. Not when it rained. Adam had no shovel. Adam was not carrying a bag of seeds. Eve, where's, where's the pipe? Pour some water. There was no irrigation, nothing. But the presence of Adam. Come on. Come on. I prophesy to somebody. Yes. Come on. May your presence be enough. Yes. Hallelujah. May your presence be enough. I receive. So, so capture this. It's, it's astonishing. That nothing is growing until Adam shows up. And Adam's presence, if you read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, it says this, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let him have dominion. Let him have this and let him do this. Let him do that. Notice, man was supposed to function divinely. If he is to be like God, if he is to resemble God, it means the manifestation of this man ought to be more divine the natural. This is why God doesn't put you in favorable situations. Because you are the favor in that situation. Amen. Hallelujah. I think I'm getting ready to preach. Let me talk yeah. to somebody. God allows dry seasons to come. come because to him, he doesn't understand how he can be dry when you're in that place. Come on. Come on. So for him, it doesn't make sense. For you to say, Lord, it has been dry. God is looking and saying, I thought you carry something. Amen. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, let's look at something. John 7, 38. 
John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now the word rivers there is patmos. Patmos does not mean rivers. It actually means a stream or a, a torrent rushing water. Rushing waters. But it's actual definition because you notice the explanation there is rivers. Not a river. But every translation of the word is either a spring, a torrent, but the actual meaning of the word, which is also there, is the word floods. Is the word floods, not rivers. Because a river and a flood are two different things. Every time God pours life, I will pour out a blessing. You will not have room enough to receive. It is God's nature that everything he does must flood. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. So, so notice what it's saying. It's saying that if they believe on me, as the scriptures say, out of them there will be floods. You see, a river, you have to direct it. When it is a flood, whether you know it or not, something is changing. Amen. 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 I, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, let's go to our original text. Let's go back to Isaiah. I want you to see something. Let's go back to Isaiah. I want you to see something. Isaiah 44 verse 3. Isaiah 44 verse 3. Listen to this. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Now we know that whenever there is thirst, the water being spoken about here is not the Holy Spirit. Uh-huh, it's not. Whenever the Bible speaks about thirst, it is talking about the words of life that come from God. Amen. When the woman was at the well and Jesus said, give me water, she said, why should I give you water? I'm a Samaritan and blah, blah, blah. You know the story. Jesus said, if you knew who was asking you for waters, you will be asking him to give you waters. And the waters I will give you will never thirst again. The woman said, sir, where are these waters that I may drink? Jesus said, where is your husband? Come on. Come on. Jesus didn't say, now lift your hand, say Holy Spirit. He said, where is your husband? She said, uh, I have none. He said, yeah, you're right. Because you've, there's five ninjas. And the one you're with is not even. Right. Notice Jesus went into prophecy. Yes. Yes. Jesus went into the prophetic. Wow. Because what causes springs of water to come is the word that goes into you. For I will pour out water upon him that is thirsty. When the thirsty one has drunk, notice what it turns it to, and floods upon dry ground. So God gives you something so that you can become a flood. Amen. 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 I prophesy to somebody. Yes. Especially those who are shouting amen. 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 Especially those who are clapping their hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Understand that. Floods. Not rain. Floods. Then after these people have become floods. Listen to what he says. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy what? Offsprings. So notice. Holy Spirit does not come until the word comes. Amen. No word, no spirit. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters. There was no action until the word came forth. Amen. 
let there be light then the holy spirit started working so there is no work of the spirit until the word is in and when the word is in you and the spirit of god joins what happens is now floods begin to pour out of you amen, amen. You become prophetically inclined. Hallelujah. You look at a situation and you say, that says, the Hallelujah. Yes. I prophesy to some, may the flow of the prophetic begin to rise yeah. out of you. I receive, I receive it. That through every situation, you have a word that will turn it around. I receive. Touch your neighbor, say Patmos. Patmos. Mm. Are you hearing me? The reason why many want to prophesy or do prophetic declaration, this is why a lot of people are confused about the prophetic. They don't understand why. To the point that others have demonized now, you don't need to be accurate. Who told you that? <laughs> Usually people who say that can't be accurate. Let me compose myself. You don't need to be... Act who, who, do you realize that? Listen to me. Let me tell you about something about prayer. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something about prayer. Prayer is not trial and error. We have made prayer a trial and error thing. No. Prayer ought to be specific. Not only specific. Prayer must be accurate. Because if you don't have an accurate prayer for a certain situation, the Bible says you are praying amiss. So you don't pray to see something happens. You know people say pray until something happens. No. You don't pray until something. No. You should make something happen. Amen. 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 Not pray until something. I'm just going to pray until. No, that means you are inaccurate. For the Spirit helps us to pray. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. It means if the God is in you. You know there are times, there are situations before they even happen. God will tell me, pray this way. Read this. Pray that way. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. This is what you're supposed to do. And if you do these things, this is what will be there. So when I am doing those things, I am doing them with such precision. I know exactly what to do. I am not guessing, okay, let's just pray and see if something will happen. We have become like that because the floods no longer exist in us. So it is a trial and error thing. Maybe I will stumble and there will be a little sprinkle and something will happen and then I praise God. No. People travel from all over the world to come here because there is a flood. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Ah, uh, you didn't hear what I said. So people know if I come, I just step there. And I sit there. I know that God can visit me. I know that God can do something for me. I just need to be in contact. If there was no flood here, none of you would be here. What for? Amen. <laughs> Why do you need to listen to a dreadlock, tattooed, nose ring, African handsome <laughs> prophet? You don't need to. You know, those who don't like me, they think people listen to me because of how I look. I look good. I know I'm very easy on the eyes. I, I, I understand amen, that. Amen. amen. It's amen. easy. <laughs> but that's not the reason. <laughs> Peep, don't start. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm... It is something... There is a spiritual materiality. There is a spiritual substance... That lawyers that are in the church, doctors that are in the church, business people, 
ministers that are in the house, they know what is in that place. I don't know if you can hear me. Ah, I love you more. <laughs> so, so hear this by the Spirit of God. So, so the, the issue is this. Let's look at the Bible quickly. Let's go to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Hmm. Jeremiah 2 and 13. Listen to this. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And have hewed them, them out of what? That word. <laughs> Broken cisterns that can hold no what? Water. So God pours something in you. So that you can have a capacity to carry water. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know if you are reading that. So the evil we have committed is, we have forsaken his word. That does something in us. And because we have forsaken that something has become broken in us. And that broken thing has become, even if God pours something. You can hold no water. Come on. So you yourself, your life will not work out. Yeah. But you'll be busy standing trying to pray for people for their life to work out. Yeah. Sometimes when he pours the water, because you cannot hold any water, he just pours through and goes to the person. Wow. Good. And then you start complaining, ah. I've been praying for people. They get blessed. But me, myself, it's like God for no, you have no ability to carry any water. Too good. So even though you're called by God, you're anointed by God, something comes on you, but it goes to another person because you, you can't hold anything. You are a broken bowl. It's like trying to fetch water with a basket. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Yes. Are you still here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. I feel like the church is here. I don't know about these guys. And are you still here? Yes. So comprehend this by the Spirit of God. There are people who cannot carry any water. The moment you have more words than results... You can't carry any water. Come on. For the kingdom of God is not in words. But in the demonstration of the spirit and power. If there is no demonstration, you carry no water. Amen. Because if you carry water, it is up to you to give. It is up to you. It is not up to God. It's up to you. God can tell you help this person. But you also can decide to help a person. There are people that Jesus healed not because his father sent him. They just found a way to compel him and he said, all right, I'll give it to you. A woman came to him and Jesus is not sent to them. Says Jesus... Uh, I need healing. He said, listen, it's not good to give the children's bread to the dogs. And the word dogs there is a lap dog. It wasn't like the dog that is outside. He said, it's, be it's better. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he said, it is not good to give the children's bread to a lap dog. Why? Why should we give it to a dog? Do you know what the woman says? She says, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Mm, Jesus said, you are deep. Go, it is done. Right. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus just was like, mm. Do you realize I always call him the 13th apostle? When Jesus told him, follow me, the guy said, let me go and bury my family. Let me go bury my father. 
Jesus was shocked. How can you be called to the resurrection and life? And you want to go to a funeral. Instead of being with me. And say, let's go to the funeral. Because if Jesus is there, your father lives. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. If Jesus comes, your father lives. But you are okay with bearing. Why? Zero revelation of who had called him. Zero understanding of who had called him. Zero comprehension of who has invited him. There are many believers that cannot carry water. Jesus said this to his disciples. He said it clearly. Go into the city. <laughs> Whoever receives you, leave your blessing. Not my blessing. He didn't say pray for a blessing. He said leave your blessing. So you have your blessing that you can give to people. Let me talk to somebody Amen. that wants it. Amen. Come on. There is your blessing. Yes. And then there is God's blessing. Amen. There is your blessing. There is your blessing. And then there is God's blessing. Amen. That is why when people want to get married or they go to the parents and say, can we receive your blessing? Yeah. Wow. You don't say, can you pray for our blessing? Right. Then they say, go, we have blessed you. We are happy for you. Yeah. Because there is a blessing that a father can give. There is a blessing a mother can give. There's a blessing a child can give. There is your blessing. So Jesus is telling them, listen, go. If they receive you, leave your blessing. If they don't receive you, take it. Dust your feet. It will be worse for them. Amen. Notice what the Bible says. Believe God, you'll be established. Believe his prophet, you what? Because there is a blessing a prophet carries. Listen to what the Bible says. If you receive a prophet... In the name of a prophet, then you will receive what? The prophets. Notice there is somebody carrying rewards that are connected to them. Come Amen. on. Come on. May you be a benefit to those who are around you. Amen. I receive. I receive it. But may you be the first one to enjoy this benefit. I Hallelujah. May you be the captain of the benefit. I receive. That when men and women look at you, they say, mm, I want to be like that. I receive. I want to be like this. Yes. So, so I want you to capture this. I'm about to finish. I promise. I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish. Isaiah 58 verse 11. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Are you there? Yes. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like what? A watered garden. And like a what? Spring of water. Whose waters fail not. Amen. Hallelujah. You are not just called to be a garden that can go out of season. Yes. You are called to be a flood. Come on. Hallelujah. A spring of water that cannot fail. Yeah. Amen. It cannot what? Fail. fail. The reason why many of you are still waiting, God heal me, God deliver me, God open those, God, God is saying, this one is not up to me. Whatsoever you shall bind Amen. on earth. Yes. Whatsoever you shall lose on earth. Yes. Whatsoever you shall decide to bless. Yes. Whatsoever you shall speak to. Yes. Whatsoever you shall command. Yes. 
I will agree with you. You are asking me for something. I have given you power to yeah. take care of. You are demanding things that I've given you control over. Let him have dominion over the earth. Don't ask me for earthly things. You have dominion. Yeah. Why are you asking me for something that you have dominion for? Come on. But the power of a child of God is in their words. Sit, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Now, now, now hear me by the spirit of God. Hear me. The word logos, right, which is the word, the written word, is not merely just written word. The word logos itself actually means thought. Because in order for you to express words, you must think them first. That is why the Bible says, for I know the thoughts I have concerning you. So you understand, by you understanding that thoughts, I establish words. So when God is saying, I have thoughts, I have good thoughts concerning you. He's not merely saying, I have ideas. I have an established word concerning you. And words are an expression of what is inside of you. So without words, there is no expression. I don't know if you can hear me. It is words that bring forth the expression. It is words that can articulate what somebody is feeling or bringing forth out of their heart. That's why the Bible says it like this. A good man brings good things from their heart. An evil man brings what? Evil things from their heart. So the heart is an expression. Please hear me. The heart is expressed only by words. This is why the Bible says God is not man that he should lie because God has no reason to pretend. His words mean who he is. Because you cannot separate his words from his thoughts and his thoughts from him. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. That's why the Bible says, and the word was with God. And the word was God. Notice this is past tense, but God is. I don't know if you're understanding. God has no past. God lives in an eternal now. But he's telling you the word was God and the word was with God. So you understand that it is more than just a word the way people think. It is an expression of his heart. That he expressed at certain times. And then you see the same word becoming flesh. But you notice when now the description of that word goes forth. He is not described as the word anymore. He is described as light. You see, some things, eh, to be honest with you, I've come to discover this, and this is the sad part. Many want to grow, but they're not ready to grow. Come on. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? There are so many believers that say they are thirsty, but to be honest, if the word was really to be unfailed to you, you are not ready. You see, we, we, th there's nothing worse than opening your Bible and have a preconceived idea of what it has said. Instead of sitting down, let the word talk to you. Amen. There is a huge, huge difference with you sitting down and the word of God. You know, sometimes when God talks to me, I'm in shock. I'm like, ah, 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 oh, wow. Sometimes I'll pace around the house by myself 
And I'm like, hey, how can I even express this? Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So many claim they want growth. Let, let me give you an example. Jesus looks at his disciples. And I'll teach on this at another time. But I'll just touch on it to show you how people are not ready to grow. Jesus looks and says, Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. Ah, people are like, come on, man. People walked away. They're like, too much, bro. We know you heal people and stuff, but this is just too much. Because we know only occultic people eat people. What are you talking about this drinking blood and eating flesh? Now, come on, Jesus. Jesus looked and said, does this offend you? You see, true revelation will offend the flesh. Amen. 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 You didn't hear what I told you. Yeah. True revelation will offend the flesh. Yeah, that's good. Will offend you. Real revelation uh, will offend you. If you're not offended, you haven't heard from God. Mm -hmm. True revelation will offend you. Oh, it will stab you. It will crush you. It will make you realize you thought you knew, but you knew nothing. Amen. That is the truth of God. That Paul looked and he said, I count to know nothing. Yeah. Except Christ crucified. I've, that, that's it. I don't care about anything else. He realized all his studies, all his years being trained, meant nothing when he came to spiritual truth. Amen. Yet he had the same word. But when the eyes of the spirit were opened, he realized that everything he knew was a lie. Are you listening to me? Today, God wants to stir you up. Amen, amen. And God wants to provoke. God wants to provoke. The waters. That will flow from heaven. Let me tell you one vision I saw years ago. And those who are in the house like the Cavalinas, the Todds, and the Lees, and the Ashleys uh, will remember this one. The, 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 uh, the lianas will, will have this very vividly. There was a day we were, I think even Mike, maybe you remember me talking about this. We were in, in the house and we were worshiping God and we were praying. And I remember seeing an amazing vision. I saw the throne of God. And from the throne of God, I saw literally water coming from the throne of God. And the water went into the crystal sea. There was like a sea in heaven that I saw. But that sea continued, but I could not tell where it ended. But then when I looked at the vision again, I saw the same sea coming out of human beings on earth. And I remembered being shocked. Then I remember looking at that word saying, out of their bellies. Then I realized, ah... It is a connection. You are like a canal that is connected Come to on. flood. Come on, Amen. prophet. Hallelujah. Come on. So good. Sometimes visions are very difficult to explain. I watched this thing and I was surprised. I was so shocked. God wants to provoke something in you. Amen. The Lord wants to do something with you. The Lord wants to lift you. The Lord wants to empower you. But God wants to bring you to a place where you'll be like Peter. There are things you can't solve with silver and gold. You can only solve by what is inside of you. Amen, amen. I don't know if you can hear me. There are things you can't solve with silver and gold. You have all the silver and the gold and they will say we, have, we can't do anything for you. There's nothing we can do for you. 
we have no answer. We have no solution for this. You gather everything you can. And a man will tell you, listen, with this, I'm sorry, we can't do anything. We can't do anything at all. Sometimes people in Hollywood reach out to me. Some of the famous people, one day they will come and testify here. I won't even call their names. Very at the top of their game completely. They'll call me because of a situation. I'll say, do this. The Lord says, do this. You pray for them. The next minute, everything changes. And they are shocked because I'm not demanding them to do anything. Not asking for it. It's confusing. But the reason why I'm able to do that is because there is something in me that I can continually give that doesn't run out. Amen. Amen. How much more for you? Amen. Who's hearing this word? Yes. God has put in you something better than silver and gold. Amen. That thing inside of you can produce every silver and gold you ever desire. Amen. You see, what brings silver and gold is value. If there is value, there will be silver and gold. Silver and gold without value, you won't have anything. I always tell people, don't chase uh, the bag or bags. Don't ever chase it. You'll be wasting time. That's why people who win lotteries in a few weeks, they are broke. In a few months, they have nothing. Because when the bag came, remember, gold measures value. So when the bag comes, comes to measure your value. You can never accumulate wealth more than your value. Amen. Those who are clapping poverty is leaving you. Amen. Amen. I said those who are clapping, you are coming out of poverty. Amen. You are coming out of struggles. Amen. Are you hearing me? The Bible says Jesus ministered with a year worth of wages. They had, listen, they had, you think about a salary, the toppest salary you can think of. Jesus was doing ministry and that's what Judas was looking after. It was too much that Judas used to steal offerings. The Bible tells you that. And Jesus knew and never did anything about it. He just watched him. Are you hearing me? Yes. How was Jesus traveling with a year worth of wage? Because what he was doing was so valuable that partners came from everywhere to make sure what he was doing was funded consistently and continually. Yes. The reason why they said, Lord, send them to the villages to find something. It is because where they were, there were no shops for them to buy these people anything. It was not a lack of funds. Sometimes you'll be in a place where money cannot buy you anything but what you have inside of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The house you're looking for is in you. Yeah. Amen. The family you're looking for is in you. Yes. yes. The business you're looking for is in you. Amen. The transformation you're looking for is in you. Amen. The millions you're looking for is in you. Hallelujah. The car you're looking for is in you. Amen. The jet you're looking for is in you. Yes. That new life, that elevation is all in you. Yes. That health you're looking for is in you. Hallelujah. People came to Jesus sick. Ah, Lord, heal me. Do you believe? Yes. Your faith has healed you. Ah. So the whole time I'm looking for Jesus... For something that is in me. Jesus didn't even pray. He said, you have made yourself well. Yes. Ah. Come on. When people came to him and they had no faith, he would get angry and say, how long shall I be with you? Yeah. Faithless generation. Because he's not, God is not interested every time. Heal me. Every time, every time, I have given you something. Stop. Yeah. 
something is proceeding from you. Amen. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Yes. And begin to declare, Lord, let the floods come forth. Lord, Lord let, let the, the floods, floods come Lift forth. your voice and begin to pray. Lord, let the floods Declare it, Lord, forth. let the floods come forth. Lord, Lord let, let the, the floods come forth. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, let the floods If you quench your voice, you quench the floods. 